Hi everyone, it's Chenzo from Reality Art Pod. I'm here to talk about the challenge USA Season 2, Episode 10, A Less Perfect Union. For me, this is one of the better episodes of the season so far. We had, in my opinion, a fun challenge, and our time wasn't wasted because in the end there was a double elimination. Before I dive in, if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, it really helps me out. I'm covering the challenge USA and Big Brother right now. Coming soon, I'm going to be covering the challenge main series as well as Survivor. So if you want to hear more, please hit subscribe. I'm new to this and I'm trying to get to my first 100 subscribers, would love for you to be a part of it. So let's get into it. We come back from last week's elimination where Chris had just defeated Sebastian. Chris is celebrating winning the elimination, but Desi still doesn't trust him. So the survivor girls have a sit down with Chris to get him in check. And I don't think it's very fair that people are painting Chris out to be the villain because he just wanted to play the game. His narrative, which I can totally understand, is that he won survivor, but he barely got to play the game. So he comes into this really wanting to play the game. And when he tries to, everyone really puts him down for it. So let Chris play. Let him cook. Why are we stifling his creativity. Josh reflects that he hasn't made a final after six seasons on the show, maybe because you're not so good at the challenge. Sorry, did you hear something? I think there's a breeze. He says that he looks up to Wes, but he knows that he wants to turn on him. Wes says Josh is a wannabe and that Josh will never be his rival. This episode, they had no time to waste. They get straight to the challenge. They didn't even go to the clear of this episode. The challenge is called Go the Distance, and it's pretty straightforward. They just have to jump off a platform and grab a baton. Every time they jump, the batons get a little bit further. Last person standing wins for the men and the women. I really like this challenge. It reminds me a lot of challenges that happen on Survivor. I feel like the Challenge USA could lean more into making challenges that remind us more of Big Brother and Survivor challenges. I guess maybe also the Amazing Race. Like, why not have them go run around whatever city that they're in doing challenges? Tyler tells us that he wants to win this challenge to help to protect Alyssa. TJ tells us that the challenge has been adjusted for each person's height, something that Big Brother notoriously does not do. TJ announces that the stakes are high because this is going to be a double elimination. There will be a male and female elimination at the end of the episode. So the women go first. Michelle, Chanel, and Alyssa all fall off before even catching the first baton. Also, they cut to Michaela in confessional, and she is fully pulling stunts in this outfit that she's wearing. Best dress goes to Michaela for this confessional look. She knew she was getting airtime today. In the next round, all of the women jump, and Cassidy is eliminated. After this, Michaela is spent. She's crying and panicking. She ends up facing her fear, jumping, and getting her baton. The crowd goes wild, and then Tori is eliminated. In the final round, Desi and Michaela jump, and Michaela wins. It's triumphant. It's her first individual win and she shouts no more heights. This was fun. It's very rare that you see someone crying and panicking then facing their fears and trying and winning the entire daily competition. So it's time for the men to go. Everybody jumps. The only person who misses the first baton is Wes. Non-rival Josh heckles him from the sides. But right away in the second round, Josh is eliminated and TJ says you and Wes must be hanging out. Tyler, Corey, and Chris are all out next. Fessy and Bananas are the final two. They make a deal and then Fessy wins. Sorry there isn't more to say about that. It all happened oh so fast. So Fessy and Michaela will pick a guy and girl to be guaranteed into elimination. Chanel, Michaela, and Desi meet up to strategize. Michaela floats nominating Tori and Desi calls Michaela selfish and confessional. The deliberation is pretty straightforward. They calmly discuss and basically decide to nominate weak players who won't win challenges and target them. They end up actually nominating Alyssa and Chris. By this logic, I totally see why they nominated Alyssa because she's pretty bad at the challenge at least. It's truly a miracle that she's gotten this far, but Chris is one of the strongest men, so why nominate him if you're afraid of being nominated in the future? If they're really looking to target a weak guy, there's one player whose name really stands out to me who is not a rival to Wes at all. Alyssa cries about being nominated to Tyler. She says she's going to use the money to start an animal rescue, which is nice. Michelle and Cassidy go to find Chris to tell him that he's nominated because he didn't go to see the balls on the wall. It seems like Chris is spending like the entire time of the show in the confessional. So after they leave, Chris stays in the confessional as he does and cries to the camera. We get maybe the third or fourth time that Chris's pictures of his family are popping up on the screen. I've said it before, but it's so obvious to me from the editing that Chris is the winner of the season because is he the only person with a family? There are pictures of his family and flashbacks to him on Survivor every single episode. He says that he'll come back from the elimination because he always comes back. This was very ominous. Before the voting, Chris campaigned to the other challengers to go against Wes in the elimination. Tyler and Alyssa kiss and hug and kiss again. I know in the preview they advertised Tyler and Alyssa kissing, but damn, if you love Tyler and Alyssa kissing, this is the season for you. In the voting, Josh cries as he votes for Wes, and then he cries again in the confessional about it too. Boo hoo hoo. They get to the elimination arena and TJ reads off the votes. 
Wes has three, Tyler seven, Bananas two. For the women, Tori has two, Michelle has one, and Cassidy has nine. It's hopper time, and Wes and Cassidy end up getting hopped. I don't know about you all, but for me, it's very satisfying when someone that doesn't have the most votes gets hopped. The elimination is called Ripped Off. They're going to be hanging from a circular bar in the air, ripping patches off of their opponent. The person with the most patches off their opponent wins. This was a fun twist on an old classic. Back in my day, we ripped patches off each other on the floor. Can we get a pole wrestle in the sky? In the first round, Alyssa is the chaser. She grabs Cassidy and rips off some patches. Cassidy plays defense. Alyssa pulls off eight patches in the end. In these rounds, it seems like whoever's the chaser first has a big advantage because the other person is spending all their energy trying to fend you off. And then when it's their time to go and attack you, they are less energized. So when it's Cassidy's turn as attacker, she mentions that she's lost a lot of energy in the previous round. Once she grabs Alyssa, she doesn't let her go. She ends up pulling off nine patches. So Cassidy wins the elimination. The men's elimination was a little bit more closely matched. Wes is the chaser first, which gives him a little bit of an advantage. Chris ends up pushing off from the center. These acrobatics were a really good strategy from Chris. He's just really good at stuff like this. So while Chris is very nimble, Wes ends up catching him and getting nine patches off. In Chris's turn as the chaser, Wes starts off evading Chris, using his own strategy against him. But Chris ends up catching Wes and wrapping his arms and leg around him like a spider. He starts pulling patches and he gets all 10 of them. So Chris ends up winning the elimination. Tyler and Alyssa say a sad lover's goodbye. Josh confesses that he voted for Wes and Wes is pissed and upset. Wes says that he's not coming back to the challenge and gives us a teary goodbye. TJ hopes that he reconsiders. But we have to say goodbye to Alyssa. I wasn't too surprised to see her on the list for this cast. Given that she seems like someone that they would ask. She's from a recent season. She's the right age. And she's someone that I think would say yes to any kind of casting call that she gets right now. With all that said, is she really for the challenge? I'm not so sure. She was admittedly very terrified of every aspect of the challenge, and it's not even in a fun way. Like, you can tell that she doesn't really want to be on the challenge. She just wants to be on TV. And this wouldn't be the first time. There's dozens of people that fall into that category of people that just want to be on TV and are terrified of being on the challenge. The problem is that most of those people that keep getting asked back are very funny and very entertaining. The problem with Alyssa is we can pretty much expect the same thing. She's going to be afraid. She's going to sign somehow get herself into a relationship and rely on that for the whole season. But she did try and she did very well in a few of the individual challenges. It kind of is fun to have this person who weighs down the teams in team challenges. It makes good TV, I guess. I wouldn't really want to see Alyssa come back unless it's on a season with Tyler and Angela both. That's the drama I want to see. Otherwise, I'm not really interested. And we have to say goodbye to Wes, who ends up saying that he's going into retirement after this and won't be coming back to the challenge. And we've heard this before from people and they've ended up coming back, but there's some sort of finality to this in the fact that he is doing a lot of podcasts and long videos reflecting on his time on the challenge. You would think it's a little random for this spinoff to be the last show that he does for the challenge, but but it seems a lot to do with the fact that he has a new baby coming on the way and wanting to start a new chapter in his life. And Wes is one of the more memorable people from old school challenge for me because I believe his rookie season was one of the first, if not the first season of the challenge that I watched when I was in school. I think I was in middle school or high school eek. But I think he has one of the more interesting overarching stories where he's treated really badly and targeted for being a rookie on his rookie season and then remembers that. He kind of just doesn't say this is what happened to me so it has to happen to everybody else. So you'll find on a rewatch multiple times Times when Wes goes to make alliances with rookies, integrate them into the game, and if it wasn't for Wes's influence, we would be seeing the same people winning the challenge year after year still to this day. We would never have a rookie winner. Does it still happen that the rookies are targeted early? Yes, it's even happening on this season. I'm just saying he puts the effort in to give people a chance and he tries to build that bridge. So for me, it's sad to say goodbye, but at some point you have to say goodbye. Can't be out here doing this stuff forever. So that's all I really have to say about all of that. Like I said earlier, if you like these videos, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'll be back later this week to talk about more Challenge USA, Big Brother, and I'll be talking about The Golden Bachelor if anyone else is watching that. Until then, have a nice week. Bye.